Welcome to Brampton Focus. Uh, it's 2017 and we are some 18 months away from another provincial election. So how are we as a province? How have we done? What's the report card? And who better to ask than a leader of one of the opposition parties at Queen's Park? I'm Michael A. Charbon. Coming up on Brampton Focus, we meet Andrea Horvath, a leader of the provincial NDP. That's next on Brampton Focus. Welcome back to Brampton, folks. You know, I've had the privilege to interview ministers of parliament, MPPs, all kinds of municipal uh, politicians and mayors. And you know, some politicians come to a television opportunity and they're very prepared. Um, they've got uh, all their anticipated questions. They stay on message. They they say the same thing all the time. And then you have the other politicians, unfortunately, where. I really feel embarrassed for them. I feel embarrassed for us because we elected them and embarrassed for them because they say the same thing. They have no vision. And then all of a sudden you come across certain politicians that you really think, wow, shoot straight from the hip. Um, there is a, a spontaneity about the person, says what he or she feels, and you feel a good kin kinship. Um, voted one of the uh, consistently most popular politicians in Ontario is my next guest, Miss a Andrea Horwath. And I've had the opportunity to interview Andrea one other time. We, we spent a, a half hour together. And I genuinely say this from my heart. I enjoy talking with you. I enjoy discussing politics. We may not agree, but I so appreciate you for what you do for Ontario and being here with us today. And well, thanks. Focus. Thank you, Michael. It's my pleasure, actually. Um, so uh, I'm going to break this up into three uh, themes because we have a, a three-part segment. The first uh, segment, we're going to talk about last year, 2016, uh, talk about it in review. Uh, second segment, uh, the objectives uh, that the NDP and hopefully Ontario will take in 2017. And finally, a little bit of uh, Karnak the Incredible. You know, we'll think ahead and see if we can predict in 2018 uh, we have an election year and what uh, you would do if you had the reins. So um, now we don't have a liberal uh, person here so this is not a pick on the liberals but there's uh, unfortunately several things that have been out in the public and in the news that we have to address. I, I want to talk first and foremost about road tolls. Okay. Uh, Tory uh, is talking about road tolls. He's talking about two bucks one way. So for a person who takes the gardener in a day for a year, it's about 900 bucks. Where do you stand as far as the NDP is concerned on road tolls on the gardener and the Don Valley Parkway? Uh, well, I think I should start by saying that I understand Mayor Tory's frustration. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the on the transit systems uh, as well is on the on the highways themselves on those roads and there's just no money uh, however i believe that it's up to the other orders of government the provincial and federal governments to step up to the plate frankly and help municipalities with their transit systems uh, this used to be done in ontario the provincial government used to help with the operating costs of of transit systems for municipalities uh, unfortunately not only did that stop uh, but then the responsibility for some of these roads was downloaded to municipalities and so now they're stuck in a pickle and they they really uh, they really have few options so what i've said is uh, I, I don't agree with the Tools. And I'm going to tell you, and again, this is where, where you and I might have some disagreement, perhaps, but I believe that that flat taxes and user fees uh, are not the best way to uh, to get public services. I think that progressive taxation, where those who have a, a higher income and have more ability to pay, uh, they pay a little bit more than those who are uh, uh, working a families. And it is it's, yeah. it is a social democratic uh, yeah. way of looking at t taxation. Uh, so. So user fees, including transit fares and road tolls and flat taxes, are not progressive taxes. Uh, income taxes are, uh, and I believe that that's why the other orders of government who collect those kinds of taxes should be at the table so, when so, it comes so to providing fear, those kinds of services. Here's a fear of Bramptonians. They just uh, ex uh, widened and extended uh, the 410. Sure. Um, and if you look at the amount of traffic that goes up and down, is that is that the next road that someone's going to say, well, we should text them because they're coming from Brampton? 
and, and so it's a it's a slippery, slippery silk spoke. for sure it is and, and I, that's worrying f uh, for a lot of people the other thing is let's face it a lot of communities uh, a lot of people in communities like Brampton for example who who don't necessarily want to drive into downtown every day and drive back every day have no choice mm. because the transit systems aren't there uh, for them to utilize as an option uh, that's convenient for them and that gets them where they need to go and when they need to go there and that's the other problem uh, so you have this conundrum where where uh, the folks are forced to drive because they have no other choices uh, and they're then being um, hit with these so extra said fees. So you said you're not going to go for road tolls and there should be more sponsorship or there should be more money coming from the province. Absolutely. Part of the problem, problem, part of the problem that we have now, and some would say is a nanny state, is we're sponsoring everything for God's sakes. Yeah. And that our budget, I mean, you see, these are tools to gain money, and, and, and I want to uh, get to the next point, but uh, just to finish this, I mean, uh, how much more of the government is going to have to underwrite that? Yeah, but um, it's the, here's the thing, though. There are some fundamentals that we think that we need to look at as a province, right? Uh, uh, if you look at those particular roads and the economy of the G greater Toronto area, that economic uh, activity is being uh, truncated because of the lack of movement. Uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce has said this, the Board of Trade has said this, uh, it's in the billions of dollars, the amount of economic loss uh, because of the uh, of the uh, constriction on the roadways. So as a province, you know, th this is one we of our largest economic it. districts, right? We need yep. to we need to be serious about how we facilitate that economy, that uh, that economic opportunity, so and, and, quick, and the province should be on the A quick on the question hook. to you, some of you your uh, NDP hardliners are saying, Andrew, what the hell are you doing siding That's with true. the PCs for God's sakes? You're holding hands and singing Kumbaya. Um, I, I would suggest that you're doing what you believe is the right thing for the people of Ontario. You're not worried about what party you have to hold hands with to be able to get it accomplished. Is that fair? Uh, it, it is fair, and, and it's but it, it comes from a different place. Like I, I respect those folks, and on a lot of issues, I agree with with those folks that yeah. uh, that are that I'm uh, kind of not agreeing with on this particular issue. But again, I go back to uh, where the money should be coming from for basic public services, and I believe that that transit um, and electricity, for example, and health Healthcare and yeah, education are all things that are they're more or less public goods that create a, 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 a create communities and uh, and create um, uh, environments where the, where economic activity can thrive right. and so that's why I've the province needs to be at the table. I've got a minute and a half, and I want to table. fit this other one in. Sure. Uh, this is another tool that uh, the provincial government is looking at to generate funds. Uh, foreign research did uh, a poll: 35 percent of Canadians like pot, marijuana, medical marijuana to be sold in pharmacies. 26 percent prefer to. 20% prefer the LCBO, and 3% um, basically believe convenience stores. Um, there has been a thought, and now um, a Shoppers Drug Mart has made a formal application to be able to sell marijuana within their uh, dispensaries. What's what's your position on that? With just about a minute left. Well, you know what? I don't uh, I don't really have a hard and fast position at this point. I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done. I know the panel recommendation has come forward, or the task force to the federal government. Uh, I think they need to make some decisions before we make decisions at the provincial level. However, you know, the LCBO does have some experience in using uh, their, uh, in, in distribution of controlled substances, right? Yes. So, so we, need, we, we need to not just throw out the yeah. baby with the bathwater there, yeah. uh, although there are concerns around selling marijuana alongside of alcohol. Mm -hmm. There's a red flag there for sure. Um, so we have the um, Hamilton Center MPP. Andrew Horvath, leader of the NDP, the New Democratic Party, for the province of Ontario. You're watching uh, Brampton Focus. When we return in our second segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the objectives in 2016. Uh, what are some of the things that we have to do? My name is Michael A. Charbon. We'll be back with more. And Andrew Horvath, right after this. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. Well, it's a Hamilton girl, um, Andrea Horwath. She is uh, the leader of the New Democratic Party for the province of Ontario. Uh, and, and she is here talking to us uh, in our second segment. Um, let's now venture into 2017. Um, some of the things that we are coming up against, uh, we've already seen 30% of hydro sold. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the government is intending to try and sell another 30%. Um, as of late, um, some constituents in the Hamilton region uh, were um, largely uh, promoted in, in the national media. They were, some of them were paying $4,000 a month for their hydro, and it's hard to keep their business open. Hydro rates are brutal. Quebec and Manitoba are less privately held, not pri publicly held, and we want to sell ours. What are we going to do? Well, I mean, this is a huge issue, and, and uh, a lot of the problems we have with our electricity system right now, uh, I believe, has has been because of the ongoing privatization. Uh, and now we have Hydro One being privatized as well, and that's just going to jack the rates up even more. And you're you're quite right. Uh, when you look at Quebec and Manitoba, I call them our bookend provinces, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they have not gone the private route in any way, and so they still continue to provide electricity at less than half, less than half of what we're paying here. Uh, so. So there's a, a lot of uh, work that needs to be done to, to rejig our electricity system so that it operates in the best interests of you know, our businesses and of our, our homeowners and our, our, our renters, of the people of this province. Uh, we've lost that advantage that we had for over 100 years well, here you, in Ontario. You, you see in, in media companies that uh, once the uh, shareholders start to drive the bus, uh, the mandate is not necessarily to deliver uh, a bountiful amount of uh, uh, product, it's to uh, return, return on investment. investment. It's and, a return on and investment. And unfortunately, um, hydro should be something that we should all share within 100%. and that we should all be responsible to. Um, I agree. And so that's one of those places well, I agree. Why isn't it an essential service then? Well, and it should be an essential service. So, and that's why we, we actually were very upset when the government decided to start taxing it. Back in 2010, when they brought in the HST, we said, do not tax the electricity system don't do it and they did it anyways so i asked uh, i asked uh, we've had several politicians come in some from the uh, conservative party I said so what do you got to do this is all we got to band together and you got to talk to your mp and you got to say give me a break what the heck are we going to do i mean oh. So there are a number of things, I believe. First and foremost, I don't know whether they're going to continue next year with selling off more of Hydro One. So at this point, they've sold off 30% of you, as you said. I think that we need to stop it there uh, and then look to whether we can turn the ship back around, as I said. I also believe that we need to look at all of those private contracts that they've signed with traditional energy generators, with green energy generators. Uh, there's a heck of a lot of fixed price contracts out there that are doing very well for the shareholders of those companies, but not doing very well for us. Now, do I think we need to start tearing up those contracts? I think that would be crazy. Look what happened with Mississauga and, and Oakville, plants. right? We're we cannot tear them, them but we should, we should certainly be going through them with a fine tooth comb and seeing if we can get some better value out of some of those contracts for Ontarians. We need to call in the Auditor General and the Financial Accountability Officer, as well as industry experts, to, to help us get advice on how do we turn that ship around? But how do we refocus? Sword, is it not, I mean, mm -hmm. we're a triple uh, triple A credit rating in Ontario. If we were to go to a double uh, credit rating, if we investigate and find that things are, you know, could be better that could jeopardize our province's position financially in, in a huge uh, well but but the, but the point would be to actually do the opposite it would to be, be to turn things around so that we we have a better position because I'm very worried not only uh, in terms of what this is doing to people and I hear stories that that honestly they bring you to tears in, in terms of what people are facing I, I met a single mom the other day she felt like somehow it was her fault that she can't give her kids the kind of Christmas that they usually have yeah, because expensive. of the bills because of the hydro bills specifically but you talked about the businesses in Ontario yes. or in, in Hamilton rather yeah. and those are just two examples and I went to visit one of them the other day yep. when I was home but um, but it's, it's happening everywhere. Small businesses across the province, industry, the large power users, the big companies, uh, the mining sector, the forestry sector, everybody is ringing the alarm bells about the electricity prices. So, so if we don't do something about it, we're going to be in big, big trouble. So reactionary uh, position is that instead of relying on provincial help, uh, everybody's going to go and get solar power and eventually screw the grid, screw Ontario, I'll der uh, derive my own power, and they will be uh, succeeding in getting another business started and we'll be there holding the bag? Is that going to be the reaction? Well, who, who knows? And that's why I say we need to actually, we actually <coughs> need to me. fix this pro uh, problem. Um, and, and, and it's interesting because the Premier, if you recall, uh, admitted that she made a mistake in, in the electricity, uh, the way they've been han handling the electricity file, but she didn't say what the mistake was. What was the mistake? If you don't tell us well, what the mistake is, how are we going to be able okay. to f hold I your mean, feet to the fire to fix the that's mistake? That's a good political shot, and I'll no, give but you it's I'll, true. I'll, I'll, I know, but I give you that one. But let's go to the, let's go to the <laughs> next one. It's, it's all fair, Paul. I mean...
<laughs> E-health. Yes. I mean, this is something that now as our population continues to age um, as a medication and all these uh, things keep moving and things are quicker, faster, yeah. shorter and more expensive. Uh, we still haven't solved that problem. Like, are we ever going to solve it's it? Very are ever, are it's very frustrating. It's very. I don't know. You know what? It's very frustrating, and uh, it's. Uh, you know, there's. A, this is another example where there's. You know, billions of dollars. Being, billions of dollars being put in, and yet the result is not coming, and it's not coming quick enough. Now, the government has appointed a chief digital officer, apparently, uh, and we'll see. We'll see whether someone having someone at the helm to kind of stay on top of the digital uh, government piece, uh, including that in health. Uh, that that. that makes a difference. I don't know. The the, the jury's out. Uh, the other thing, though, I think uh, that's important uh, uh, to remember when it comes to to e-health particularly is that there's been uh, there's been criticism for a long time, uh, but no real you know plan being put out there. Except that all of a sudden, Kathleen Wynne's banker friend Ed Clark is talking about, and the and the health minister is talking about uh, the possible privatization of our e-health records, which for me is a red flag. Um, again, because there are some things I believe that need to be publicly owned and operated and, and um, have that accountability and that oversight. And I believe our e-health records are one of those things. You, you said a couple of times we need some oversight. You commented we need uh, to call this person in and that person in. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to divert to more red tape to solve things that were generated from red tape. If you, I mean, if we take a page out of Trump, sorry about that, guys. Hey, Steve Pagan, how you doing? Um, just because I said Trump was going to win. If you if you look at the, the perspective of saying that it's a business perspective and we just wipe everything clean and start again, when do we stop all the bureaucratic oversight and get down to the nitty gritty and cut deals that make sense for Ontario at the beginning? Well, you know what? It's interesting because I think there are places where we need to have, um, you know, a better uh, relationship with the private sector in in terms of uh, uh, learning, um, you know, how to how to do certain things. But I think it's a mistake to think that government and business are the same kind of animal because they're not. They're different animals, and the mission and the the, the purpose of government is different than the mission and purpose of business. Uh, that isn't to say that there can't be best practices, if you will, that can be mm -hmm. traded back and forth. I agree. I agree that there can be uh, but let's not forget that um, that the government has a totally different mission and focus than business does well it's interesting when you talk to people on the street when they start to see the, the wages that some uh, public uh, sector uh, people earn compared to some people who work for the government there is a huge divide and uh, slowly I think people are getting tired of that um, so when we come back um, our final segment uh, with Andrew Horowath we're going to talk about uh, 2018 hey it's election year. What would the NDP do if they were given the reins? Uh, the Bob Rays of this world, the Jack Laytons of this world, who had a chance to do it. What if we give the reins to Andrew Horrath? Horrath? How will you ride that horse to success? My name's Michael A. Shermo. You're watching Brampton Focus. We'll be back with more right after this. Back to Brant to focus our final segment with Andrea Horvath, who is the leader of the NDP for the province of Ontario. Um, we have a, a website at brantofocus.ca, and many of you uh, propagate that website with your questions and show suggestions. And we actually have a couple of questions here, Andrea, for you okay. that some of our viewers wanted to um, ask you. And I want to kind of make these rapid fire because I want to know more about what would happen if Andrea was a premier if you were given the reins, as one would say. So here are the questions. Um, uh, somebody wants to know um, what is the possibility of an increasing GO transit from Union to Brampton? So many people work in Toronto from Brampton. We need more trains. What would you do to help increase that? Uh, I think that's got to be a priority. Actually, I think uh, the reason why people are upset about the idea of tolls is because they don't have better options. People need to be able to use transit. Okay. Uh, one of those tools, if we say we commit to transit, uh, many people in the surrounding area to get to a transit hub 
need to drive, we need parking. Uh, there's a second question here about parking in uh, Bramley, Oakville, um, and in the Peel region. Uh, would we not need to increase parking? We'd have to go up because there's not land. Would there be a commitment to uh, increase parking availability? And we see that in other stations. I mean, yeah. I've been out in Oshawa and Pickering, places like that, where they have the garages that service the stations. Otherwise, and I, the parking uh, spaces are all reserved? Oh, well, but what you need to, so that's the other piece. So the parking needs to be there, but it needs to be affordable too, yeah. right? It needs to be affordable. Uh, somebody commented a, a third question about the Ontario Municipal Board. Um, do we continue with it? Do we review it? Do we eliminate it? Do we do something else? Well, some municipalities have actually called on the province to eliminate it completely. Toronto, for example, is one yeah. of those. Uh, I know when I was a city councillor that we had problems with it too. It, it absolutely needs an overhaul. Uh, elimination is something I'm considering, uh, but let's at least uh, not throw out the baby with the bathwater, have a hard look, and if it can't be fixed, get rid of it. Most uh, important question, I think, of all the four that were posted on BranthamFocus.ca, uh, what kind of initiatives uh, can we uh, look to if the NDP is uh, given power to invest in Peel and particularly in Brampton. We need jobs, we need manufacturing, uh, we need to be able to maintain people to stay within the city. What would you do? Well there's a couple of things. I mean you named the jobs issue. People need good jobs, jobs that support families. Uh, so we need to work on that. Uh, healthcare system, again I don't want to get into the details because there's many, sure. uh, but uh, this is a growing, growing community and the investment in things like healthcare and education are not keeping up. And so we need to make sure that that investment is there uh, to keep up with the growing needs of this community. Uh, and I think if, if there's one other thing, uh, it's around the affordability of everyday life. I mean, people want to live here. It's a great community, uh, but uh, it's expensive uh, to, to live in Ontario these days. Let's make uh, make life easier for folks uh, so that they can have a good quality of life. Okay, and keep those questions coming. Um, so now we're going to switch gears. In, in 1990, uh, you had uh, the Ontario um, populace who was tired of uh, David Peterson. Uh, they wanted to they wanted to try something different, so they elected Bob Ray. Remember Ray days? Mm, I don't know if it was a total success, but we changed uh, we changed gears and we we moved forward. Uh, you look in uh, 2011, uh, where you had uh, Stephen Harper and Michael Ignatieff, and um, then you had Jack Layton taking the most amount of seats ever in federal government. Again, the NDP inching up, inching up. Let's look ahead to 2018. There is an election. Mm -hmm. um, last election, many people thought that the Liberals weren't going to get in with a gas scandal, etc. They got a they got a, a majority. Mm -hmm. If Andrew Horwath and the NDP were given the reins of Ontario, what would be some of your objectives in the first 100 days to right the province from your perspective? Uh, I think there's a couple off the hop. One is total focus on the electricity system. I know we talked about it earlier, but it is a major issue for people. Make sure that system is operating in the best interest of Ontarians, of Ontario families, and of our businesses. That's job number one. Uh, but job number two is jobs. I mean, I think that uh, that issue around how do we make sure that good jobs are, are back here? Uh, how do we make sure that people can actually you know, have a life, build a life uh, in the communities across this province. Uh, that's got to be another big one. And it's back to the basics. I mean, if there's a if there's a sec or third thing, it's it's the the catchphrase back to the basics. Our healthcare systems falling apart. Our education systems falling apart. Uh, we need to get back to the the fundamentals that people expect their government to be able to deliver uh, and to deliver well. That's got to be priority number one. And for that person, um, some would say that uh, the the feeling of what happened with Donald Trump in the United States would never occur in Canada because the NDP is the Bernie Sanders party. You are that <laughs> third party that op offers another option. With just about two minutes left, um, what would you express to the folks in our Ontario in, in a parting thought as uh, as a consideration when they're looking at now because you know, about, a, about a year or so till sure. we get to it. Well I mean I think that it's important to recognize that people are very disappointed with the current government. Uh, I think Kathleen Wynne is a premier who's not who she said she was going to be and that's leading to a lot of disappointment uh, in people. Uh, I think that uh, if you see what the NDP has done over the last number of years we've been fighting to make life better for Ontarians. That's what we believe is the job of government uh, and that's why we've done things like force the government uh, to give us a break on our bills when it comes to the HST off of the hydro bills. Uh, when you look at the options though come 2018 what people are going to have to decide is um, 
Is Patrick Brown and the Conservatives all that different uh, from Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals in the way that they've been governing, governing the province? Privatization, uh, you know, uh, uh, contracting out of services, small government, uh, austerity. These are the kinds of things that the Liberals have been providing in Ontario. Uh, these are traditional uh, Conservative values. Uh, New Democrats, yes, we believe that, um, uh, that we have to be careful with the public purse. We believe that 100%. In fact, uh, we believe that giving in interest payments to the big banks only prevents us that from providing better services uh, to people. But it is for us about the fundamentals. It's about education. It's about health care. It's about good jobs. Uh, it's about people having opportunity and hope for the future. That's what New Democrats um, have been working on in the last number of years. And that's what we hope to bring to the discussion uh, over these next few months leading up to the election so in 2018. 45 seconds left. Uh, I got to ask this. What are you going to do about the deficit? You know what? The, the deficit is a is a is a tough nut to crack. There's no doubt about it. But but I don't think largest that, sovereign debt in the world. But I don't think that uh, that we need to. Uh, I don't think we have to look. Um, uh, I don't think we have to look at it in isolation. We look at the deficit as a percentage of GDP uh, and determine the extent to which that is uh, is worrisome. Now, is it higher than it should be? Absolutely. Do we need to pull it down? Absolutely. But we need to do it in a way that provides opportunity for people. Andrew Horvath, uh, Horvath, I should say, looking forward to uh, 2018 if an election was positive. I thank you so much for being here. I enjoy listening to you. I, I would love to talk more. Um, I think you have a vision, and that's good. And I hope it can come to fruition. Thank you for coming to Brampton. My Focus. pleasure, Michael. I'm thank Michael you. A. Charbonne. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Be well.